Hey, this is Anthony with Revzilla TV, where you can watch, decide, and ride. Welcome to our detailed breakdown of the new 6D ATR1 helmet available at Revzilla.com. So the 6D ATR1 is a top-end off-road helmet developed by a team of guys with over 10 years each in off-road premium helmets. And really it accomplishes a few things. The first thing it does is table stakes for the pro level. We're seeing Eli Tomac wear this. We saw Zach Bell bonk the heck out of his head at the Dallas 2013 Supercross. But really think hardcore high-end, lightweight, three pounds, seven ounces, tri-composite shell, and you're not adding anything with the 6D's technology by way of increased size. It's going to vent really well. There are all the types of things that I'm going to work into later on in the video. What you need to know is there are two key changes on the 6D, two key safety benefits that you're not finding anywhere else on the helmet market right now. So 6D stands for six degrees. It uses an omnidirectional suspension system. And what that is, most helmets have a single piece of EPS. One side of this would be a single piece. The 6D helmet on the inside of this helmet right now, the entire shell on the inside, the EPS is two layers of EPS with seven millimeters of space between them, supported by, you can see these rubberized dampers. They are circular disc dampers built into the EPS. There are 54 of these in the helmet throughout the entire sphere. What they do is accomplish two significant safety features. The first one is low energy threshold impact dissipation. I know that's a mouthful, it's super technical. Let me break it down for you. In the motocross world, they were finding that guys would have a lower speed impact and they would find that the EPS was not compressed. Typically with a helmet, when you crash, your head is going to be pressed into the EPS, it's going to deform the EPS, and that's what dissipates the energy. In low speed impacts, they were finding that guys would have pretty hard get-ups, but they weren't hard enough to compress the EPS. So what was happening is the rider's brain as well as their skull were taking all the impact. So what 6D does is by using these dampers, what happens is even in a low speed crash, immediately when your head starts to press against the EPS and compress it, you're getting a progressive suspension that starts to dissipate energy and slow down the forces transferred to your head and dissipate them all right from go, from the immediate point of impact. What happens is a harder crash is both pieces of EPS will completely compress and then you get into that normal scenario where your head is going to deform the EPS. That's for more of a high speed crash. The second thing that's really important with the 6D technology, it's called angular acceleration. That would be a crash, it could be off camber or at an oblique angle where your head wants to spin or rotate inside the helmet. When your head is rotating, it causes that rotational force to be transferred to your brain. And what 6D does is that when your head is rotating against the layer of EPS that's touching your skull, you get this shearing force. And what has, happens is that these dampers will now allow the helmet to slow down your head's rotation inside, side to side, as they move independent of each other on the same plane. That's something that a traditional single EPS in any helmet, or even a multi-density EPS, cannot do. So again, you're getting the same coverage you get with a normal high-speed impact, but again, low threshold and angular crashes, you're going to get much better coverage from the, EP, from the way that this system is laid out with the ODS, the Omnidirectional Suspension System. And again, 60's been through testing, they put it through its paces independently, and they're claiming 25 to 47% increase in protection against those kinds of crashes. Now, if you take a step back from that and you look at that seven millimeters, obviously it increases or you have the ability to have that suspension and then having that also promotes dramatically better airflow through the helmet. Getting into some of the other features in the 60, and I'm gonna start with fit here, you're looking again at a super premium top end off-road helmet. So let's talk about fit, intermediate oval head shape, I weighed it in, a medium's gonna come in at three pounds, seven ounces, no surprises. It should fit most riders, most guys that have a head shape similar to mine, you're not gonna have any issues there. And by having the two layers of EPS, it didn't create extra girth to the shell, and it's not gonna create any funny types of fit, so keep that in mind. Also, we ship in exchange for free if you're not sure about it. I'd also love to hear your gut reactions. Click here, subscribe to Revzilla TV on our YouTube channel, and let us know if you're currently wearing a 60, if you've seen Eli or Zach Bell crash in it, what your current gut reaction is. I wanna hear what your thoughts are. Now, moving to the more traditional setup of the helmet. Tri-composite outer shell. Let's start from the outside, work our way in. Carbon fiber, fiberglass, Kevlar, no surprises there. Lightweight and strong. 
peak with shearable bolts meant to break away so it's not going to create a catch point when you go down. You have a helmet that has a tremendous amount of ventilation. 11 intakes, 5 exhausts, you can see it all across the brow line, down here through the roost guard in the front of the muzzle, on the sides, moving into the back, passive exhaust, venturi's up along the top, down back around where your neck roll would be, toward the base of your skull, and when you turn it underneath, I'm going to pull this out, this comes in the box, this is a brand new one I have in front of me here, pull that bad boy out probably going to get mad at me that I did that. I just ripped it. Oh, well, we'll have to get another one. But notice that you can see the two layers of EPS. That big channel, that seven millimeter gap that goes all the way through the helmet, it comes all the way down and now major amounts of air are able to exhaust. Because we know that if you're riding in either motocross or supercross scenarios, you're sweating like a madman. Moving to the interior of the helmet, I'm going to slide it over. I'm going to move my stuff off the table here. You can see there are big cutouts. These are clavicle cutouts. We all know that in certain kinds of scenarios, it only takes seven pounds per square inch to break your collarbone. These cutouts are going to aid in keeping the helmet off of that as a pressure point if you go down. Double D-ring construction, emergency cheek pad removal system. I'm just going to pull it out that quickly, that easily. Again, the helmet will take the eject, the eject system. And as I undo it here, you're going to notice it is a cool max interior, antimicrobial, antibacterial. It's going to be wicking. I'm going to pull my helmet liner out and let you see it very basic in its construction, which in my opinion for a helmet that's going to take this type of abuse is a good thing. I'm going to put it down here over to the side. Notice 3D construction on my helmet liner, lots of mesh panels, great support around the crown of the head, and notice where it connected. Not at the forehead, it connects at the brow, plastic to plastic, so no pressure points there. If I turn it inside out, you're going to see the Coolmax liner, multiple densities. It's meant to wick, it's meant to be a sponge when you're sweating your face off when you're out there hitting the whoops and hitting those triples. Now, if I bring the helmet back here, top to bottom, I'm gonna turn it like that so you can see it. Look at the amount of vent holes on the inside, 10 millimeter vent holes with great big channels. And also even in the front here where my finger is, you can see that there's areas where the air will go right up in between the liners of the helmet, the EPS liners. So again, you're getting that super sucker factor out of the helmet. If I rotate it to the back, you can see how that finishes off as well and get a little bit of light here along the front. So a fully designed and complete helmet from 6D. So click here if you want to find out more about it and buy it at revzilla.com 6D. I'm very interested to see if and when the 6D ODS technology makes it onto the street market. We'd love to hear your feedback, but also more importantly, your questions. This is an over $700 helmet, Apex Predator, top of the food chain. It's going to go heads up with the Arai. It's going to go up heads up with the Shoei. If you have questions about it, shoot us a line. See us at revzilla.com, 877-792-9455. Remember, we ship in exchange for free. There are solids to go with the graphics that are coming down the pipe from 6D. I'm Anthony. Thanks for tuning in to our detailed breakdown of the new 6D ATR1 helmet available at RevZilla.com. We'll see you next time.